All right, welcome everyone. As we learn, sponsored by A.B. Spry and family, for the troops in Eretz Yisrael and for uh, the safety of Klal Yisrael world over, Shimon Klein, Lili Nishmas Hashran, Shemen Yehuda, and Gittel Ba Shimon Pinchas, and Neshama should have an Aliyah, uh, and Irving Fishbaum for Issa Ben Rezel, and uh, Yeza Ben Rezel for Meir Ben Chayisara. We welcome in here this evening Irving Fishbaum and uh, Ben Sian, uh, Aaron Swade. Uh, we welcome in Dr. Udell and Stephen Holtzman, Sean Fogel, Marshall Castle, Yitzimala Baruch Ian, Nachman Chapler, Ruven Pollock, Berish Gesserman, A.B. Spry, Shimon Klein, Dr. Guy, Eddie Chazan, Yitzi Fjuk, uh, uh, Yaakov Kranz, Shelley Zeitlin, Abe Arbach, here in Shul, Arm Blumenfeld, Gedalia Engel, Rebbe Avraham. Uh, we have uh, uh, Reb Kramer and Rich Lenner and uh, Saba, Rumain Shannet, and uh, uh, Reb Michal Avraham. Uh, uh, David Helfgott joining us now in Kalal uh, We're missing the center. Barish is not here. Barish is in Zoom. Uh, oh, yeah, we have a tent in the back. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Listen, you could learn whatever you want, but you can't leave. Uh, the, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, we begin uh, on the bottom of Pei Zion Amid Beis, as we are holding Amarei Shlokish, as we welcome in Mel Zachter for our 22nd Zoomer of the evening. Amarei Shlokish, Loizach the Torah Laav, the Torah only awarded the Father, El Shvach Urim Bilvat, the uh, prophets of uh, her youth, uh, her lost articles, her, her, uh, uh, her Maisia Dayim, but not uh, if he hits her. Rabbi Yechonin Amr Afilu Pitzia, even if he doesn't wound her, he still, he still doesn't get it. Says the Gemara, excuse me, Rabbi Yechonin Amr Afilu Pitzia, she is, the father is awarded even if she's hit and there's no wound. Says the Gemara, Pitzia, it's all If she's just hit without damage, I feel a Rebbe Laza come, like coming by late. Even Rebbe Laza, who says that it's awarded to the father, that's only elechavala. That's only a wound. The the achresa mikaspa because uh, since she's worthless and since the father has the right to sell her when she's a katana, so that's why we might award it to the father. But a p'tzia, which doesn't even cause her to be worthless, why should that go to the father? Why does Rabbi Yechonin say that it's awarded to the father? Ah, where she, he, 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 she was hit in the face. Hitting her in the face makes her less marriageable and less saleable. That makes her worthless, and that's why it's awarded to the father. Says the Gemara, as we start a new sugya, three lines from the top, four lines from the top, four lines from the top, as we welcome in Ilya Shutman for our 25th Zoomer of the evening. Jay Siegel has, uh, look at these pictures that come up over here. Uh, I have to meet him that, that look good. They look like Hanukkah and Iris. I'm the only people that have uh, told me them that look like Hanukkah and Iris. Uh, the... Uh, People listening to this year on 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 Kalalushin and they don't know what I'm talking about. Talmidim that look like that that 
Yeah, but uh, some of my Talmidim, the people think I'm certifiable. Uh, now. We've all certified. Yeah, you. my Shalimin has just joined us. And you, it's good to have Yeshua Shmuel Eisenberg is smiling over there. Um, okay. So 26 Zoomers. Kematria Yud K Vavke. That's a good number. Now. Achayvel uh, Be'evit Kanani Shalacherim Chayiv. If Marshall slug somebody ever somebody's Evid Kanani also has to pay the money to the master. But Rabbi Huda says if he embarrasses an Evid Kanani, an Evid Kanani doesn't have humiliation. My time in Rabbi Huda. What's the reason of Rabbi Huda? Anoshim Yachtov Ish V'ochiv. When men fight together, a man with his brother. That's only one with his brotherhood. Yotza Eved, that excludes an Eved, there's no, there's no brotherhood by, by a, uh, uh, by a Eved Kanani because he, he can't marry into the Kohal. So he's not considered a brother with us. Says the Gemara, Rabbanon, Achiv Hu he is a brother. In regard to mitzvahs, because we know that an Evid has mitzvahs like a woman. We learn it out, la la minoshim, that an Evid Kanani has a mitzvah, he has to have a mila, and uh, he has all the mitzvahs of a woman. Says the Gemara, Vrabon Elamiatal Rebbe Huda, according to Rebbe Huda, Zoyme Evid lo yaraigu. The din is that if a man test, if two people testify, if uh, Shmiel and Yankel testify that an Evid Kanani killed someone, and it turns out that they were not there that day, they were in Acapulco that day, so they're put to death, because they wanted to have the Evid Kanani put to death, so we do kasher zomam lasis lachiv. Oh, but if an Evid Kanani is not considered lachiv, then they shouldn't be put to death. El me'atel Rebbe Yudah zayim me'evid lo yaraigu. Because the Pasuk says, we should do to, it, to the set of witnesses what they plotted to do to their brother. And we just said that an Eved is not a brother. You're right, except that there's an extra Pasuk. It says, by uh, you should destroy the evil from your midst. So that's a sweeping passage that says that Adam Zamim applies even if it's not Achim. Now let me ask the Gemara, the Rabbanon, according to Rabbanon, that say an Evid Kanani is considered Achim because it's Achim B'mitzvahs, Evid Yechashel Amalchis. An Evid should be acceptable for royalty. Says, A ger is allowed to marry and to call yourself, and a ger is not acceptable for royalty. There, the Pasik ups the ante. When it talks about becoming a king or taking positions of uh, nobility, it says, from the midst of your brothers. Not just your brothers, but from the midst of your brothers. From the best of your brothers. And that excludes a ger and an evet. Because if, if an evet is considered your brother, what does it say by testimony? He Huh? Honor. Sheker honor, thank you. Sheker honor ba'achiv. He, he, he uh, gave testimony on his brother. So you see that it, by Eidos it says achiv. And if an Evid is achiv, Evid should be kashal Eidos. Of course, an Evid is not kashal Eidos. Amar Ula Eidos le Matzis You can't say that an Evid should be kashal Eidos because a woman is not kashal Eidos. Asya edus bekalvachaymer meisha. We learn out edus bekalvachaymer from a woman. Oma isha she rui alavay bekal. Not a woman that's fit to marry into the congregation. Psula edus eved. She ain't a rui alavay bekal. Eved that's not fit to marry into the congregation. Ain't a din she pasul edus. 
says, well, yeah, but maybe a woman is disqualified from Edis because she doesn't have a Mila. Mala Isha, she can't even rule you a Mila. Tell me about Evid, she rule a Mila. We do Mila on an Evid. Says, well, cotton, well, cotton will disprove you. She yeshna be Mila, a cotton has a mitzvah of Mila, or possible Edis. So the Gemara says, Mala cotton, she ain't be mitzvah. So cotton doesn't have mitzvah, so he's not a bar mitzvah. Tell me about Evid, she be mitzvah. So, a woman will uh, disprove you. It has mitzvahs. In other words, uh, an Isha doesn't have mila. A cotton uh, doesn't have mitzvahs. They each have different deficiencies. Hatsada Shavashaban, but the common denominator of a cotton and an isha that's puzzled the Adis is she can't ain't on bikala mitzvahs. They're not all the mitzvahs. A woman doesn't have all the mitzvahs, she part of a mitzvah sashesh is mangrama, and a cotton doesn't have mitzvahs, so psun lahit, and they're disqualified for testimony. Afani Oviesa Evid, she ain't a bikala mitzvah, doesn't have all the mitzvahs, so puzzle hide. Says the Gemara, no. Mala tzada shava shibahen, the tzada shava of a uh, isha and a cotton, shekain ain't an ish, they're not an adult man. Taimir be'evit shu ish, he is an adult man, and therefore maybe he is kosher for testimony. Alatesi megazl, a gazl, a, th- a, a robber, is not allowed to testify. So the Gemara says, well, and even though he could marry into Klal Yisrael, he's not allowed to testify. So an Evid that can marry into Klal Yisrael, surely should not be allowed to testify. So the Gemara says, Mali Gazlan shekain mice of Garmali. Gazlan, his <laughs> sin causes him to be ineligible. The Evid didn't do any sin. Says the Gemara, Toi Mabe Evid shekain mice of Garmali. We learn it out from a tzad shava of a robber and let's say an isha. You'll say an isha, she's possible to aid this even though she can marry into Klal Yisrael. So surely an avid uh, uh, who can't marry into Klal Yisrael is disqualified for testimony. You'll say, ah no, mala isha, she doesn't have a mila. Gazlan toichia. Malagazlin, Maisev Garmaloi, Ishatachiach. And therefore, we learn out from the two that just like they are disqualified from testimony, the Evid is also disqualified from testimony. Now, before we go any further, I want to talk about this because this is a very hot button topic. And it's a good place to talk about it. As we welcome in Naftali Javelin. For our 30th Zoomer of the evening. Whoa. Where's Mark Frankel? You know, you should get on the phone. Fo- huh? He stood me up again. It's an amazing thing. He told me that this, this week should be a good week. You must be really having trouble with, with, with people working. He's not the only one. I'm missing a couple guys too. It's tough. Oh, you still have a shop? Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, I wonder, in, in Baylor Kinwood, is it snowing now? In some places it's snowing ferociously. There were certain stretches of the, the New York Thruway that had six feet of snow. Six feet. That would keep you busy, Marshall. Raja, would you get your thing through six feet of snow? <laughs> I, I kill a train. Um, the, uh, did you ever bring me water? Yeah. You, uh, you have water. Oh, okay. You don't have to get up now. If I really want it, I'll tell you. Um, so anyway, that, the hot-button topic 
uh, is why is a woman pusillanimous? Especially in today's climate, uh, women uh, don't take these things lightly. What, I don't have uh, credibility? I don't have intelligence? Why am I pusillanimous? So they want to say that the Chas Bishon, the Torah is chauvinistic. So there are those that say that it's an einish to the woman because of what Chava did. Right? Chava, who gave the fruit to, to man, to her husband, so she proved untrustworthy. So therefore the women were punished because of that. There is one school of thought that that's the reason why women are pusillanimous. But in a, in, a, in a very good example of how we don't realize the reason for things, uh, my first rabbits in Allah Shalom, Miriam Liba Basra Baron, and by the way, in case anybody is interested in uh, looking at it, I uploaded last night onto YouTube uh, my Rebetzin's Leviah. So if anybody wants to see it, uh, it was a three-hour Leviah. It was attended, but those that were there, Shelley was there, and Mel was there, and uh, Ruvain was there. I think Aaron was there, too? I don't know. But uh, uh, surely, of course, Irving was there, um, uh, uh, the uh, uh, there were sixteen hundred people there, and uh, it, it was a very profound and moving experience. So I uploaded the three hours. It's in two parts on my YouTube channel. If you want to see it, it 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 is worth to learn. You can learn a lot from it. Um, My Rebbe Tzinalea Shalom was a witness to malpractice. She happened to be accompanying somebody in the delivery, and the doctor that took care of the person was drunk. And my Rebbe Tzinalea witnessed it. And uh, they were suing for millions of dollars. So my Rebetzin was pregnant in her eighth month when they uh, called her in for a pre-trial uh, deposition. And uh, she was a star witness. It was a multi-million dollar thing. And I told them that it's not right to take uh, my wife in when she's very uncomfortable in the eighth month. So they said, okay, she doesn't want to testify. She doesn't want to testify. So, of course, my Rebetzin is not having any of that, you know. So she said, okay. So I said, but I'm not letting her there alone with you guys. She's eight months pregnant. So they, no, you can't be there. You could then testify in the court. So I said, I'll sign a waiver that I won't testify. I didn't know anything. So, so I was there, and I watched how these two barristers started rifling questions at her. And it was the most unsneistic process to take a woman and grill her like that. Unfortunately for them, my wife has, Allah Shalom, had an ironclad memory. And she remembered the colors of the tiles in the bathroom. She remembered everything. When they finished with her, they settled. They didn't want her as a witness. They settled the case. They gave several million dollars to the people, and they finished her. But it was then that I understood that a woman, to go through the drish of a hakira of a court case, especially in Dine Nefashis, is a very unsneistic thing to do. And when we say that women are puzzled or aides, we don't realize that the Torah is saying that there's some people that are not meant to go through that interrogation. It's not for a woman. It's just not right. There's a lot that we don't realize. Um, Marbaret Ravina Amar, 
Mabre Ravina says a different reason why Avodim are disqualified from testimony. Mabre Ravina Ama Amakra Lo Yumsu Avais Albonim. That fathers are not put to death by children. Lo Yumsu Alpi Avais. Your, your, a person is not put to death by a father by a father that doesn't have a genealogical connection with children. We know that uh, the Eved, it says that when, when, uh, when Avram left Eliezer and Yishmael uh, to go to the Akeda, it says, Stay together with the donkey. And it says about Eliezer that it's that the Eved is like a donkey, just like a donkey doesn't have any genealogical connection with the children. So therefore, uh, an Eved doesn't have any genealogical connection with, with its children, and therefore he's disqualified from giving testimony. The Esau could I the Kamrina, no Yumsu of Isal Bonim, that children can't give testimony about their parents, then it shouldn't say Lo Yumsu of Isal Bonim, it should say Lo Yumsu of Is Albanayam. Be'edus Bonim, Licht of Rachman Lo Yumsu of Is Albanayam, by their own children. My Bonim, by any children. Shmami no, it means the Lo Yumsu Al P of Is that we don't accept testimony. Of fathers that don't have a genealogical connection with their children, and that means they don't have a connection with uh, their children because Evid uh, is an Amadoy Melchamar. Elamiata says, Then what does it mean? Are you going to say the same thing? Now, who are children that don't have an attachment to their fathers? A ger. So does that mean that a ger, because a ger is a guy, a ger that's born, uh, it, it, that can converts, is like a newborn bane. And he doesn't have a, a, a biological, uh, not a biological, but a Torah connection to the father. So, so are you going to say that if he doesn't have a connection with his father, he's puzzled to hate us? El Ager Hachanami the Pasalaitis. Of course, we know that a Ager, a convert, is Kashalaitis. So, Imre Hachiyash the Ger, Nehei the Ein Lechias Lamala, even though he doesn't have connection to the previous generation when he converts, but Lamat to Yesh Lechias, but he has a connection below. Lafuke Eved, who doesn't have connection above or below. He doesn't have a connection to his father, nor to his son. If you would suggest that a ger is possible, that fathers are not put to death by children, that the ger is that fathers should not be put to death by their own children, and we would learn, Right? They're not just telling you that you, you can't testify about your relative. And sons should not be put to death by their father, which would mean that's not coming to tell you any more relationships because uh, we know relationships already from the first one. And that would mean, means that you can't, you can't uh, have witnesses of someone that's not related to his father, the Shemat Minei Trey, that the uh, father uh, cannot testify about his son, you can't uh, be put to death on children that have no attachment to their father, namely a ger, and then if a ger who does have connection to his children can't give testimony, then we would know an Evid from a Kalvachimer. The Evid Nafkalei be Kalvachimer, Megar. He doesn't have a connection to his father. But he has connection to his children. He doesn't have connection to his father nor to his children. Now, 
that uh, since it says Lo Yumsu Avais Albanim, which not Avais Albanayim, but Avais Albanim, which means that you can't be put to death by a father that doesn't have children, namely an Evet, the Mashma Lo Yumsu Avashain Lechias Banim. Shmami no Evet Shain Lechias, Leila Malu, Leila Mata, neither above nor below, who the Apostle ate this. Avogar, Kevin the Esh Lechias Lamata, since he has. Uh, connection below, he has connection to his children, calculates. So then says the Gemara, Vechite Malich de Rachmana, Obonim lo Yumsu Alavi Sehem, and children should be not put to death by their fathers because they're related, because it's not true, Bonim lo Yumsu Al Avais, that Bonim She'en Lam Avais can't give testimony because we said a girl can give testimony. Lomali de Kasirachman and Bonam lo Yumsu al Ovis, the Mashmal lo Yumsu al P. Bonam Shain Lam Chiam Savis, which would imply that you can't be put to death by children that don't have a connection to the father, namely a girl. But we said that you could be, an aide could give testimony. Says, well, you're right. It really should have said lo Yumsu Bonam al Yedei Avoy Sehem. Only their fathers, because of their relatives. But those that don't have a father, a girl, could give testimony. It's just for symmetry. I did the cuss of lo yumsu avis al banim, siv nami banim lo yumsu al avis. Now, this is, by the way, a very um, unique thing that we say in ID a symmetry in Psukim in the Torah. You see, the Gemara a lot of times says that it doesn't have to say this in the Mishnah, this is obvious, but since it said it the other way, it says it this way too, that it should be symmetrical. It should be, uh, that makes sense. Why? Because Torah was Torah Shabal Peh. They learned it by heart. And since they learned it by heart, making it symmetrical makes it easier to memorize. But to say symmetry in a Pasuk in the Torah, Pasuk is Torah is Torah You're not supposed to learn it by heart. So then why do you say symmetry? So this is a kasha. It's a very strong kasha. This is a kasha the Ritva asks. And the Ritva says that you see that the reason of ID is something else. It's because it's prettier. It's more... A more a beautiful text when it's symmetrical. The prose is nice. And that's lahagdil Torah u lahadira. To make the Torah more beautiful. That's what ID is. And not just to facilitate the memory. Um, you know, Gedalia, I will take you up on some more water. It's also a chak night, so... so. Uh, we lost our center. He snuck out. Should have changed him. Uh, I have chains in the back. Thank you. Um, okay. Now, the next Gemara is again a very interesting piece of Gemara. Very interesting piece of Gemara. It's, uh, it's, it's good. You got to put on your thinking cap a little bit. Not that this was so easy, but the next one. It's not good to bump into a deaf mute, an imbecile, and a minor, because if they hurt you, they're potter, because they're potter in comments of Shemitaira. If you hurt them, you're chay. Okay. Now, let me talk to you outside about this before we learn it inside. What happened over here was, is that a woman married a second husband. She had a son from her first husband. She had some property that she inherited, and she wanted it to go to her son from her first marriage when she dies, and not to her second husband. So while she was alive, she said that the property should go to her son. Of course, while the husband is alive, she can't give it away. But she wants that when she dies, it shouldn't be inherited 
by her second husband, but it should thank you, but it should go to her son from the first marriage. Now, at first glance, it would seem to be that uh, she could do that. After all, her husband, when she, when she married her second husband, he has the right of, like we learned in the Mishnah Yomis just now, she has the right of the usufruct, the, he, he has the right of the usufruct of the payers of the property. But the property is hers. And she said that if she dies, it should go to her son from the first marriage. So let's see what happens over here. The, the plot thickens. It's very interesting. I, I played pickleball this afternoon, and I must have worked up such a sweat that before this year, I already drank 48 ounces of water. I just had now. It's really, really something. It's really interesting. Um, anyway. Imagine the olden days when I was drinking Pepsi, how I would have poisoned myself. Uh, the uh, Irving, you remember every share of Pepsi, remember? Every share. Uh, <laughs> Imei de Rav Shmuel bar Abba Mehagrunya, the mother of Rav Shmuel bar Abba from Hagrunya, that's almost hungry, but it's not. Mehakrunya, having a Siva Leila Rababa. She was married to her second husband, was Rababa. Kasvinu Lenichse, she wrote while she was alive <laughs> that her property should not go to her second husband. Her pop- property should go to Rav Shmuel Bar Abba Basa After she dies, her husband is entitled to the use of her while while she's alive, but after she dies, she wants it to go to her son, to Reb Shmuel Bar She passed away, Baruch Dayan Emes, Neshama should have an aliyah. Also Reb Shmuel Bar Abba came to Reb Yirmiya Bar Abba. Reb Shmuel Bar Abba went, it was an Erlich Yid, he went to Reb Yirmiya Bar Abba, Ukmur Benichsei, and he said, yes, it's yours, your mother granted it to you, Mechayim. It's yours. The second husband didn't take it lying down. Ozel Rababa, Amr Lamilse Kamid Ravoshia. He told this psak to Ravoshia. Ozel Ravoshia, Amrit Kamid Ravyuda. And Ravoshia told it to Ravyuda. So he says, no, it's not so passion. Amalei Hachi Amal Shmuel. Shmuel says, Let's take a woman, Sarah. She sold her nichse melug. Nichse melug is the property that she brought in with the marriage that she arranged with her husband that he could have the right rights to use the fruit, the use of fruit. But if it goes up in value, it belongs to her. If it goes down in value, it also, she suffers the loss. So her Isha, let's say Sarah is married to Chatzko. And her Isha Shemachra Benichse Melug, she went ahead and sold her property to Marshall. You know Marshall was getting in this. He sold the property to Marshall Bechaye Baila while Chatzko was alive. And then Umesa, then she died. The din is habal moitzi miyada lekuchus. Chatzkel could take it away from Chatzkel could take it away from Marshall. Now Marshall is hopping up and down. I mean, yeah, unbelievable. He's hopping up and down as if he was a hockey player, right? He's he's hopping up and down by the goalpost, and uh, he's saying, "What are you talking about?" I I, 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 I I don't understand uh, how how could how could uh, how 
could he take it away from me? She, she sold it to me while the husband was alive and she had a Kenyan Paris. It was her nirsei malug. The, the, the husband had the right, the husband Chatzkel had the right of Yusufruk, but she owned it and she sold it to me. And, 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 and why should, now she died, so the, the marriage with, uh, the, 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 the marriage with Chatzkel is severed. So I should get it, Marshall says. She sold it to me. So Amrua came to Rabbi Yirmi Ababa. They told this to Rabbi Yirmi Ababa. So Rabbi Yirmi, it's just like this. Marshall could take it away. Uh, excuse me, just, just like Chatzkel, the husband, could take it away from Marshall, the buyer, even though she sold it to him. So therefore, even though she gifted it to her son from the first marriage, Rabbi Yirmi Ababa, Rabbi Huda wants to say that the the Rababa, the husband, the second husband, could take it away. So, Amalahu, so Rabbi Yirmiya Bar Abba, who made the psak that the, the son from the first marriage could keep it, said, look, I know Masnisa Yadana. I know a Mishnah. Now listen to this Mishnah. Did Nan Avram writes his possessions to his son that it should be his after the son dies. I mean, after Avram dies. Avram says, I'm writing my possessions that it should go to Yitzchak after I die. So I ben ain't a yachalimka. Yitzchak can't sell it. Until the father dies, it's in the possession of the father. The of ain't a The father can't sell it because he promised it to his son. Macharov, if Avram sold it to Marshall, mechurinat sheyomts. So Marshall could keep it until the father dies. Because until the father dies, it's his, so he could sell it to Marshall. Machar Aben, if the son sells it, oh, Yitzchak sells it to Marshall. Now the father is still alive. Machar Aben, if Yitzchak sells it, ain't like Marshall can't have any rights to it until the father dies, because until the father dies, it remains the father's. Once Avram dies, so Yitzhak would have got it, so now Yitzhak sold it to Marshall, now Marshall gets it. Ah, the Shiloh is, what would be in the following case? Avram said, I'm granting this to my son Yitzhak after I die. Yitzhak, while his father is alive, sells it to Marshall. And then Yitzchak dies during the lifetime of his father. And then the father dies. Does Marshall get it? Or do we say since Yitzchak died during the lifetime of his father, he, he never came into possession? And then Marshall shouldn't get it. So let's see it inside. It's very interesting. Machar Aben, if Yitzchak sells it, Marshall doesn't get anything. But at suggesting Amara, Kimayas of, when Avram dies, Mio Marshall gets it. And that's even if. Yitzhak died before Avram died. Va'afal gav the Mesa ben b'chayav, and it never really came into Yitzhak's possession. The loyos lidei aben, it never got to him. Uh, that's a very big chiddush. Right again, let's let's 
let's uh, work that out again in the case. Right? Avram says it should be his son's Yitzchak when he dies. Yitzchak sells it to Marshall. And then Yitzchak dies before his father. We're saying that even so, when Avram dies, Marshall gets to keep it. Even though it never came into Yitzchak's possession. Because he died while the father was still alive. This is Kareb Shim Ben Lakish. This is like Kareb Shim Ben Lakish. It makes no difference if Yitzhak died while Avram was still alive. So that it never came into Yitzhak's possession. Or if the father died while Yitzhak was alive. Still, still, Marshall gets it. That's a very big Kiddush. And the Gemara says this is actually a machloikis. This is actually a machloikis. The Ipmar. It's cool. They're arguing over me. I like that. The Ipmar. Mokhar Aben Bechayev if Yitzchak sold it to Marshall while his father was still alive. And Yitzhak died while the father was alive, so he never yet came into possession of it. Marshall doesn't acquire it. Because Yitzhak never came to possession. He died before his father died, so he never came into possession of it. That way Yitzhak sold it like Kano Lekeach. Marshall doesn't get it. Achi Yomisa of. But Vichy Mayisa of. But when the father died, Islay the Lekeach. That's talking about the Loy Mesa ben Vichay of. That's talking about where Yitzhak didn't die during the lifetime of the father. The Asli de Aben. Because then after when after his father died, he inherited it. And therefore his sale to Marshall went through. Avo Mesa ben Vichay of. But if, if, if. Yitzhak died during the lifetime of the father, so it never came into the position of Yitzchak, possession of Yitzchak, even after the father died, Nami Why? Because he holds that at the time that Yitzchak sold it, even though what right did the father have in the Karka? He already sold it to his son. The father's right was, is that he was able to use it while he was alive. Ah, but Alma Kasava Kinyan Peris Kikinyan Aguftami. That the right that the father had to use it is as strong as a Kinyan Aguf, and therefore Yitzchak's sale to Marshall is not good. If he never comes into possession, if he dies before his father dies. The Chizoven Lavdi Dezoven. And when he sold it, it wasn't his. Because the father's Kenyan Paris is Kenyan Aguf. Rab Shimon Lakish Aimer, Konolekech. Rab Shimon Lakish says that uh, Marshall does get it. Because Kikitani Masnis and Mokar Aben. That if Yitzhak sells it, Ainu Lekeach Achi Yomisa'av, the marshal doesn't get it until the father dies. But Kimayisa'av, when the father dies, Mia Islay Lekeach, that's even if Yitzhak died before his father. Leishna Loy Mesa Ben Mechayav, Dasili Deidim the Ben, where it came into the hands of the son, Leishna Mesa Ben Mechayav, or Yitzhak died during the lifetime of his father, the Leosili the Ben, still Kano Lekeach. You know why? Because the father's Kenyan, after he sold it to his son, was only a Kenyan of using it until he dies. And Kenyan Aperis loved Kenyan Aguf, and therefore his Kenyan is not strong enough to block the sale that Yitzhak made to Marsha. Alma Kisav Kenyan Paris loved Kenyan Aguf Dami. Biki Kazavan Dide Kazavan. And therefore, when he sold it, he sold that which, that which was his. Now the Gemara wants to suggest that this is between Rabbi Yirmi Ba'aba and Rabbi Yehuda of whether this, this machloikis 
Oh boy, I'm, I'm going to cry. This, you're lucky we didn't have ten. If we had ten, I would shoot you. Uh, I wouldn't be able to answer college anyway. The, no, I shoot you in the foot. Uh, <laughs> you must be tired. I would shoot no, I that's no good. You have shear here. That's no good. Wow, it's already five to nine. I can't believe it. Um, we're doing a chak afterwards, right? Yes, we are. We're doing we're, we're doing a chak after this. We are certainly doing a chak. Um, so now the Gemara. Remember, we have a machloikis here between Rabbi Yirmiyah Bar Abba and Rabbi Abba of whether that which the wife said that I wanted to go to my uh, son uh, from the from my son Rab Shmuel Bar Abba from my first husband whether that works Rabbi Yemei Bar Abba said it works and Rabbi Huda says it doesn't Vanan Hashta we we we're, we're gonna say that Bain Yirmiyah Ba'aba, both Rabbi Yirmiyah Ba'aba, that Paskin that the son could keep it, or Bain Rabbi Huda, they both hold Kirib Shim Ben Lakish Svirilu. They both hold like Rabbi Shim Ben Lakish that uh, Yitzchak could sell it even if he died. Yitzchak sell to Marshall is valid even if Yitzchak died before his father. So therefore, the Ka'amar of Yirmiyah Ba'aba, Esau Kedait the Kenyan Paris, Kenyan Aguftami, if you'll say that Avram's right to use it until he dies is like a Kenyan Aguf, Kimayas of, if the father dies, Umayas Aben Bechaya of, and the son dies in the lifetime of the father, then Marshall shouldn't get it, because the Kenyan of Paris of the of, of the father is Kikinian Agruf, then 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 uh, Yitzhak sale shouldn't be good. Amai Isle Lakak, he kazov and I when he sold it, Lav Di De Kazov. El Lav Shmamina, it must be Kinyan Paris, Lav Kikinian Agruf dummy. It must be that the Kinyan Paris that he had, the right of Yusuf until the father had until he died is not Kikinian Aguf and it was not strong enough to stop the sale that Yitzhak made to Marshall. So then over here also, where the second husband had a Kinyan Aperis in the property while his wife is alive, that shouldn't be enough to block that which she said that it should go after her death to her son, to Reb Shmuel Bar Abba. So why, Reb Yudhi, do you say do uh, you say that uh, it should be awarded to the second husband? So Adrua Lekame de Rabbi Yehuda. So they, this was a very good retort, and they told Rabbi Yirmiya Ba'aba's uh, claim to Rabbi Yehuda. So Rabbi Yehuda says, I'm sorry, it's not the same. Amalahu. Achiyama Shmuel, so said Shmuel, Zu, this case, Zu, ain't a doyma le Mishnah Sena. This case is not like our Mishnah. So the Gemara wants to suggest that the reason is, is that maybe Kenyan Paris is Kenyan Agaf. That the right that the father had in the usufruct is like he owns it and therefore normally Yitzchak's sale to Marshall would not be good if uh, Yitzchak died during the lifetime of his father. But over here there's a different reason. Because why did the father say that he's giving it to Yitzchak? Why did the father have to say it should go to Yitzchak? It's going to go to Yitzchak anyway. He's, he's the Irish. He's the son. It must be that he's saying it should go to him that he has the strength to sell it now if he wants to sell it. That's why. But that's only in that case. 
And now it's normally Kenyan Paris is Kenyan Aguf, and Yitzhak wouldn't be able to sell it. And that's why she didn't have a right to grant it to her son from the first marriage. Because the husband's Kenyan Paris is Kenyan Aguf. So, and, and that's what the Gemara says over here. My time, I'm Rabbi Yaisi Bishlai, me Tani Ipcha. If I would say it the other way around, Hakaisib Nechasib La Aviv where the son wrote it to his father. Son, son. The father doesn't inherit the son. The, the, the son's sons inherit. So there, you could say that the Kenyan parents left to Kenyan Agoftam. If we say uh, this halacha, that would show that Kenyan parents left to Kenyan Agof. Elahashta diktani akais of nechas of lebnai, the that which he wrote it his estate to his son, it's to give him extra powers. Mishum deroyel yarshayu, because anyway the son would be inherit. So what was he saying? So the Gemara says that's not a good answer. Amalei abai ought to bro yaris abba. Does a son only inherit his father? And abba lo yaris bro, a father doesn't inherit his son. Ella, it's in the case of where the son said that it should go to the father, we understand it means He's saying that it shouldn't be inherited by his sons, but only by the father. Here, where he writes it to his son, he's saying it should go to only that son and none of the other brothers. It's not to give special powers. It's to tell them that it goes only to you and not to your brothers. Normally, in normal Yerusha, it would go to all brothers. If there'd be a first one, he would get a double push, but it would go to all the brothers. So he's saying it should only go to you and not to the other brothers. No riot that there's any extra strength. And therefore, if you hold that, uh, like Reish Lakish, that where he said it should go to his son, and the son sold it to Marshall. And the son Yitzchak died during the lifetime of his father. It's still sold to Marshall. That's a riot at the Kenyan that the father had. The Kenyan Paris is Lavka Kenyan Aguf. And the sale of Yitzchak to Marshall was a good sale. And then, therefore, Tainas Rebbe Yabba over here also, the mother, even though the father had the right of the Yusufrat, uh, even the, 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 the mother, even though her husband had the right of the usufruct, should be able to grant it to, to her son from the first marriage. Says the Gemara, no, that's not what Rabbi Yudha meant. Elamai ain't a doyma Mishnah say, no? Ah, this is a big suva subject. Mishum takonas usha. Because of a takana established when the Sanhedrin was in Usha. The Sanhedrin, after it was exiled uh, from the Lishka Sagazas, from this chamber of cut stone in the temple, it went on ten exiles. Uh, it was in Yavna, it went on ten exiles. And one of the times it was in Usha. So in Usha, Sanhedrin instituted the Amr of Yaisi Barabchanina, Barabchanina. But Usha Hiskinu Ha Isha Shemachra Benichse Malug Bichaye Baila that a woman that sold her Nuchse Malug during the lifetime of her husband, Omeisa Abal, and then the husband died, Omeisa, and then she died, Abal Maitzimiyara Lekuchas, the husband could take it away from the buyers. This was an institution in Usha that even though the wife sold it and all the husband had was the right of Yusufra. And even though we should say Kenyan Paris Lafka Kenyan Aguf Dami, so he shouldn't be able to block her from selling it. But the, in Usha, they gave the husband a greater strength. They wanted that there should be good feelings between a husband and a wife. And they said that even though she sold it to Marshall, when she dies, the husband could take it away from Marshall. And therefore, according to the Takonas Usha, the same thing over here, even though she gave it to her while she was alive, 
she get granted it to her son from the first marriage. When she dies, the, the husband could take it away from him. And that's why Rabbi Yehuda said that it doesn't go to Rabbi Shmuel Ba'aba, but rather to the second husband, Rabbi Abba. Now, you know, I like to tell you that if you found this hard, then you're normal. Uh, the, I was talking just before to a Magid Shir, to my dear friend Yitzi Kurtzer, uh, who said the Shir in Scranton this morning and in Muncie th this evening, and he said to me, it, it was kind of hard, right? I said, yeah, yeah, it is kind of hard. Um, we did the Mishnah Yomis already, and now we're going to do a Chak.